a catalog model. For years, she was underestimated. Her own agency had their doubts. Then, Tom Ford called. Elite Models, how can I help you? Born March 1st, 1978 in Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. Her mother worked public relations. Her dad holding a managerial position at Ethiopian Airlines. The second oldest, she has one older and three younger brothers. A middle-class family, Kabede remembers academics first in her household. Return from school, snack, homework until it was time to sleep. She attended the elite. Cause I'm not that up. No way. An international K through 12 grade school in Addis. I was not a happy teen. I was quite solitary. I had few friends. I was very bookish. I was one of those kids who always felt misunderstood. My plan was to go to university. And I guess, somehow, I shifted along the way. Fashion wasn't on her radar, but she soon found out it had her on its own. A French film director spotted Leah at school and set her up with a French modeling agent. She gave it a go, moving to Paris, but it was short-lived. A combo of homesickness and lukewarm work sent her back to Ethiopia, where she modeled for a while. There, she would meet and marry her husband, hedge fund manager Cassie Kabede. A move to the U.S. with her family would fare much better. In Chicago, she was signed to Elite Models, booking catalog work. Everything was so tangible in the 90s. Magazines, cassettes. Casting directors would comb through talent at agencies and cards. Comp cards are a snapshot of a model's work, stats, and agency representation. James Scully, a former fashion director, stumbled upon Leah. I found Leah's card in Elite Chicago. I was like, who is this girl? And why is she sitting in Chicago? I need to meet her. Leah and her husband moved to New York, with Scully taking her portfolio to various designers. They turned him away. The line I'd always get was, wait till she's more experienced. That was a usual code for something else though. And he had inclinations that it came down to her being black. I once tried to make a magazine editor use a black girl on a shoot, and she didn't speak to me for two weeks. Reflecting on the past, she explains how odd things were. You're just the executor. Towards the beginning, I experienced some really strange things, just because I was black. Awkwardness on set, complications on set. Pictures of Leah were sent to Tom Ford, through FedEx, three days later after setting the Polaroids. Book her exclusively. Elite didn't push for Kabete to get to Milan. So she flew there on her own. Tom Ford remembers when he met Kabete. She looked at me in the eyes, and I was quite literally stunned. Leah projects an aura of goodness and calm that outshines even her extraordinary physical beauty. She booked the Gucci Fall 2000 show and the results were massive. I was pregnant on my first real show, which is kind of crazy. Nobody knew. I was so sick and somehow managed to walk that stage. She also had her daughter in August of 2005. At the time, Tom Ford was also at the helm of East Saint Laurent. He chose her to front the Reeve Gauche Fall Winter 2002 campaign with fashion photographer Steven Mizell. From Steven, I learned everything about modeling. Steven would put a mirror in front of us, in front of the girls. We learned a lot from that. The editor of French Vogue, who spotted Leah at the Gucci show, devoted the entire May 2002 issue to her, alone. A year later, she would make history again. She became the first black woman to represent Estee Lauder in its 57 year history. I shouldn't be the first, you know what I mean? Why is it now? It's like you guys are so far behind. Diversity lasts when it no longer has to be the subject of a story. She shot legendary campaigns for The Gap and Calvin Klein, including the Eternity Fragrance campaign. Also an actress, Leah starred in films including The Good Shepherd and Desert Flower. Based on the life of Somalian model Waris Deary, Tackling issues plaguing African women, women's health, especially maternal and pregnancy issues, are dear to Kabeh. 2005 saw her appointed to the role of the World Health Organization's Ambassador for Maternal, Newborn, and Child Health. In 2007, she ventured into designing, launching Lem Lem, meaning bloom and flourish in Amharic, her native Ethiopian tongue. It started out as a children's clothing line, with pieces hand-spun and embroidered in Ethiopia. But once moms brought pieces for the kids, of course they asked for bigger sizes for themselves. It's one of the few ethical brands being sold in high fashion stores. Her illustrious career, spanning 20 years, is a rarity, only an occurrence for models who reach the pinnacle of success. When Beth Ann Hardison, former model and agent, was asked about Leah if there was anyone like her, no one, no one. <laughs> 